Please join me as we read responsively to call the worship. It's printed in your bulletin. Rejoice. Happy Christmas to everyone. Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas to you also. Christ our Savior is born. God's light is poured into the world. O oh, come, let us celebrate this wonderful gift. Let us praise God with shouts of joy and sing. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is Joy to the World, number 246 in your hymnal. God, even though many of us have gone through the gift giving and receiving, have feasted with family and friends, there is yet another gift which has been given. You will wrap the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, around our lives. The light of your love through him is shining brightly. It is not a harsh light but a multitude of bright colors that remind us of the wondrous ways you love us. Open our hearts and spirits as we hear the words of your holy scriptures and the beautiful hymns. Bring us to you with such joy that it will seem as though our feet are even touching the ground. Our act of praise this morning is Psalm 97, number 816 in your hymnal. <laughs> Rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and deep darkness surround the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord and burns up his adversaries round about. The Lord's lightnings illumine the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim God's righteousness, and all the peoples behold God's glory. All worshipers, 
bearers of images are put to shame, who make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before the Lord. Dion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice, because of your judgment, O God. For you, O God, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil, preserves the lives of his faithful, and delivers them from the hands of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. of faith this morning is the traditional version of the Apostles' Creed, number 881, in the back of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last City. And the Lord be with you. And and thanks for the joining our Christmas Day service. And uh, many of church members already warned me uh, yesterday that not many people showed up today. <laughs> but we have uh, so much more than we expected. So thank you for visiting and joining our worship service. And thank you for all the visitors to be with us this day. Uh, now uh, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you to pray. Uh, for our church, for yourself, and for your family, and for our community in silence briefly. So let's take a brief moment to pray uh, for the world and for, the, for your loved ones as we enjoy the coming of Christ today. Now let's take a brief moment of prayer. Let's pray. God of promise, you have given a sign of your love through the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who was promised from ages past. We believe, as Joseph did, the message of your presence whispered by an angel, and offer our prayers for your world, confident of your care and mercy for all creations. But God, we also confess that often we find darkness more comfortable than light. We confess that we find your good news frightening and unsettling, especially when we consider its demands as well as its promises. We confess that Christmas sometimes becomes more to us than the birthday of the Christ, partly because we do not want a Christ child in our lives or in our world. So forgive us and break us 
Bend us and remake us. Give us the courage to lay ourselves open to the wonder and healing of your coming. And we ask to be born again into our world. Be born again into our hearts and lives. We pray this in your son's name. And all God's people can say it together, Amen. Amen. And now let us get our, our voices one more time and offer the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. offer another hymn uh, because we have no choirs today. Um, it's in Lord, I lift your name on high. It's in this black book, The, the Face We Sing, number 2088. Let's all stand and sing together. Scripture lessons this morning are very short. Um, first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Second lesson is from John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the third lesson is from Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me 
to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, this is for time for offering, so um, the Orishas come forth to help us. together. Pray for the offering. Holy One, as we celebrate the birth of Christ's child, we seek to honor you with this monetary gift. We know that everything in this world is a gift from you. So God, we humbly return a generous portion of this gift to you. We pray that this gift may help our church to change people's lives and to spread your message of salvation. In the name of the baby lying in the manger, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, please be seated. Okay. Okay, and I'd like to say uh, thank you one more time for not forgetting that we have a worship service on this Sunday <laughs> and coming and joining our service. Because some people, because we had a Christmas Eve service just 13, about 13 hours ago, <laughs> We are, sometimes, some people assume that we don't have to worship on Sunday. But you know, as I shared yesterday, the only one gift that God wants from you, and then only you can give, is to worship. Amen? Amen. So we worship for who He is, and for what He has done, and for what He will do for us in our life. So we came together and worship Him. Amen. So let's say Merry Christmas to... Merry Christmas! Merry and let's say uh, Merry Christmas to the person next to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
it's amazing um, that I shared about it, you know, 25 minute length sermon just 13 hours ago, and I was sitting in the computer to finish my sermon last night. <laughs> my head was like empty. <laughs> but thankfully, God gave me the you know, time to prepare in advance. So I'm going to share uh, the, the message, the title, What Child Is This? Now, as we sing Christmas carols this time of the year, the one of the popular songs that we often sing is the song named, What Child Is This? Do you know this song? Yeah. And today, what I'd like to do is to let the Word of God answer the question. And as we think about the birth of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And it is amazing to recognize that here we are some 2,000 years after his life. And there are millions of people around the world right now who still claim that Jesus changed their lives. This is amazing. No? <laughs> and the scripture says that Jesus is the name that is above all other names. And you'd have to say that it's a quite a name. Because you can talk about God all day long today. And there's really no controversy or tackles when you talk about God. And you can be on talk show and discuss spirituality or God. And, but when you bring up the name of Jesus, there is controversy. Yeah. He is the only way to God, but some said He can't be the only way. The name of Jesus brings controversy when you try to share His name with your neighbor or your friends. In, or in public place. And there was a lot of attention still 2,000 years later to his name. The scripture says he is the name above all names, and yet his name is often attacked. And his name is the only God-like name that is used as a cuss word. You know, think about it. And someone's hammering his or her finger by mistake, and they said, oh, jeez. And they take his name and use it in vain. And you never heard anyone hammering and say, Oh Buddha, or oh, Brahma, or oh, Confucius, or oh, oh Muhammad. They don't do it. And the name of Jesus is, you know, something special. And who is this child? A lot of people only know snapshots of Jesus when they attend church at Christmas or Easter. And some would say, well, I know the six pound, eight ounce baby Jesus, sweet baby Jesus, and that is how they know him. Or others who say, it's the 33 years old Jesus on the cross, and I know that man was nailed onto the cross. But they don't really have a full understanding of what child this is. And so what I'd like to do today is to look at but the scripture says of who is this child. Um, so let's learn two words first. The first word we will learn is the Hebrew word, then is the word hine. So let's say, everybody let's say hine. <laughs> and the second word is a Greek word, idu. Idu. These two are the same word in two different languages, Hebrew and Greek. The, you know, Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and some portion was written in Aramaic, though. And the New Testament was written in Greek. So this is the same word in, in two different languages. And it's the word in the Hebrew and the word in the Greek that's translated into the biblical English, either as lo, or see, or behold. <coughs> we are going to, you're going to remember this word because all of the scriptures that we're going to look at together today includes that word, idu or hine, behold. Now, anytime you see this word in scripture, it indicates that you are about to hear a very important statement after it. He said, behold, check this out. And in modern day language, it would be like, man, you better watch this. Or, man, you need what I'm about to tell you. And or pay attention or listen. This is amazing. So immediately following this Greek and Hebrew word, idu or hine, 
Uh, what we are going to find is statements about Christ that are truthful and life-changing. Let's look at some different pictures of Jesus in the scriptures today. The first picture would be uh, this. Behold Jesus the baby. The Isaiah 7.14, these words were prophesied of some 700 years before the birth of Christ. It says, uh, it's a New King James Version, because some of the uh, NIV version or some modern English translation sometimes omit the word behold. It says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. And what's the next word? Behold, hine. It means check this out, pay attention. It says, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The listeners of this message would have been blown away. They'll say, what? You mean the Savior we've heard about, he will be coming? He's going to be born of a virgin? 700 years before his historical birth, Jesus was prophesied that it would come and it would be a, in a miracle way. And actually, childbirth itself is a miracle. With this little teenage girl, Mary, who had never been with a man, submit and says to God, May it be done unto me according to your word. And the Holy Spirit does this miracle, and she gives birth to the Christ child in a manger. It was, it, um, actually the manger was uh, technically uh, in a cave. Um, and they wrapped him in a swaddling clothes. And they were actually the clothes that were used to bury the dead. And there you see a picture that this child, Emmanuel, that means God with us, he was born to die for the sins of the world. He said, Behold, the virgin will be with child, and she will give birth to Emmanuel, God with us. Behold, pay attention, Jesus the baby, because he, he was born, and he will die for the sins of this world. So the Isaiah 9, 6, it says, for unto you a child is born, unto a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He said, Behold, here's the news, the Christ child will be born. Behold, the baby Jesus. And another picture of Jesus I want to see is this. It is from John 1.29. He said, Behold, there is Jesus, the Lamb of God. The John the Baptist made this bold declaration recorded in John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. He said, Hey, everybody listen up. Behold, there he is. We've heard about it. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He, he said that. The Lamb of God and his audience would have known what did it mean when um, the John the Baptist mentioned the Lamb of God? Because they lived in a time where there was a sacrificial system in their religion. When someone sinned, that something else could die in their place and their sin would be forgiven. And they used to offer a lamb to the priest as a sacrifice to take their sin away. And John the Baptist said, Jesus is not just a lamb, but the lamb of God, who is to be slain for the sins of the world. And Revelation, Revelation chapter 5, verse 12 says, Worthy is the, this lamb, Jesus, who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And it says, Behold, Edu, it's Jesus the baby, the Christ child, who was born to die. Behold Jesus. He was the Lamb of God. And another picture of Jesus I hope you will get is this. It's from John 19.5. It says, Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns 
and the purple robes. And the pilot said to them, and what did he say? He said, Behold the man, Jesus. Miraculously, he was all God and at the same time all human being. And he was God in flesh, but he was not an ordinary man. He was God and was so full of God's love and compassion. So when he saw people, he would just bleed with compassion. You know, remember about the ten lepers, the story about ten lepers, who were considered outcast and no one would go near. But Jesus reached out to them and touched them. That was the kind of man he was. He was the one who would see blind eyes and would heal them. He was the one that was so loving to those who were so different that the religious leaders couldn't stand him. And Jesus was the man who was obedient to God even unto death and took whippings for sins so that he would be healed. We would be healed. The so scripture says through the mouth of Pilate, Behold the man. Jesus the man who died, who endured the whippings and the pains and deaths for our sins. Now, according to Isaiah 53, verse 5, um, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And the verse 6 of, from Isaiah 53 is so true. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him, Jesus, man, the iniquity of us all. And what child is this? Behold, check this out. And he says, don't miss it. Jesus, the Christ child, he is the Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. Behold, Jesus, the man who endured the pain of the cross, being obedient to God, even unto death, and is risen again by the power of God. That's the thing we have to remember on this Christmas day, rather than just enjoying, just celebrating the atmosphere of the festival things. And who else is Jesus? There's another personality of Jesus that we need to know and then need to remember. He is soon returning king. This is what he said in Revelation 22, verse 20, 12 through 13. He said, And behold, ye do. Check this out. I hope you're paying attention. He said, I'm coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. He said, I am the Alpha and I'm, I'm the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Who is Jesus? He just didn't die. He returns soon when the day comes. And nobody knows exactly when it is, but the Bible says it is always should be soon. It requires us to be always alarmed, like the phone ringing, and, then, <laughs> and keep awake before God and follow God's way. Because when he returns, he will repay according to what we have done. So we should keep awake and see if you're following him. And lastly, Jesus wants to share life with you. Who is Jesus? He wants to share his life with each one of us. The Revelation 3.20 says, that this is a beautiful verse. He said, Here I am. Behold, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they are with me. Behold, I'm here. I'm standing at the door of your heart. If you let me in, I will show you the unconditional love of God. And Jesus said, Behold, if you let me in, 
I will show you the peace that passes all, understand, surpasses all understandings. Behold, if you let me in, I will bring you a joy that is unspeakable. Behold, if you let me in, I will bring a healing that you never know. Behold, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Behold, it is Jesus, the soon returning King, and He is knocking the door of your heart. And I'm so afraid that there are people around the world who will play Christmas and miss the risen Christ. And He is standing at the door of your heart, and your door is still closed to Him. So we should behold Jesus, the Son of God, who is this child? He's the risen child born to die. He's the Lamb of God slain for the sins of this world. He is the God man who endured brutal pain on the cross for our sins. And he is soon returning king. And he is the one who right now is standing at the door of your heart, and knocking it, and begging you to. Let him in. I hope and pray on this Christmas day, we should open your heart to let him in to your heart so that he will be the king of your life, so that he can be the true Lord of your life. And you could experience the unspeakable joy and the peace that only you can find in Christ. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. And may we experience you, Jesus Christ, on this Christmas day. Let us know your life. And let us know your resurrection power. And let us experience your life, your Christmas, your forgiveness, your grace, and your freedom, and your power. God, help us always to open our hearts to you, Jesus Christ, so that you can let in to our hearts and you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and the Savior and the friends in our life. We pray this in your son's name and all God's people can say it together, Amen. 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 Now let us all stand one more time and offer our last hymn of dedication. This gold talent on the mountain is found on a hymnal number 251.
I'm going to do benediction. We've seen His glory, the glory as of God's only begotten, full of grace and truth. How great our joy. So now go forth and proclaim it. And the grace of the God Jesus Christ and the grace the love of God our Father and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now go forth in peace and enjoy the rest of the day of your Christmas. Amen. <laughs>